This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through your uh, 2020 uh, E-Pro Model 19 RD. All right, so I'm on the door side of the trailer, of course, and I'm walking towards the rear here. So you have um, scissor-type stabilizers. They work with a three-quarter inch crank or a three-quarter inch socket on a drill. That's what most people use these days. Um, storage, of course. Um, you access your spare tire here and through that port right there to drop it. You have a quick connect for your LP, which is right here. Uh, you get a hose. Basically, your, your grill will sit on this rack here. The rack will go on there. You have the table also. But your grill will sit on there, and you'll use the LP quick connect hose to connect to the grill. And then the other end will connect to this fitting down here. Make sure you turn the valve on. It has to be in parallel. Like right, let's see here. This is off. If you can see it, that is. It's kind of hard to get a focus on it here. Down there. Let me see where we at. Right there. So right now the valve is off. If you turn it parallel with the fitting, it's on. So, okay. So you have to plug in your grill. Um, this this is a vent for your range hood. Now if you're going to run the range hood fan, you have to know that there's a baffle in here. So you have to push up on these latches here and this baffle, ha baffle has to flap freely if you're venting to the outside. Otherwise you just keep it shut, okay? Uh, your stairs fold into the trailer. If you're on uneven terrain, you can adjust the length of the legs by pulling this pin. There's one on each side. Right there, pull it out and adjust the length of the legs. All right. Um, keep in mind to run, your on, to run your awning out, you have to have the door come off a 90 degree angle from the uh, trailer because if it's open too far, the arm will hit it when it opens. So you want it to be about like that. Okay. Um, this is your grill. This, this is your for your bike rack here. If you need to adjust the uh, into a different position, let's say uh, you need it to be close, the bikes to be closer to your tow vehicle or closer to the trailer, you can insert this instead of having the straight one, which is right here. All right, you can actually move it forward or backward if, if necessary. Although this this setup here works for just about every application, it's very common. Also. Keep in mind, a bicycle hangs on each side, so the, half of these are going to be reversed. To one of these, and then one of these will go this way, because a bike hangs on each side. So you have to configure it for your bikes. All right. Um, this is the hookup. is just in case you wanted to add a solar battery charger. It would just be a solar panel to charge the battery. Um, so that's where you would plug it in if you were to do something like that. Okay, so you got two... Uh, LP tanks and it's an automatic changeover regulator so it, it draws down the door side tank then the off door side tank and back and forth okay um, your power tongue jack uh, obviously goes up and down but you can you can pull this cap right here if it was to fail and you get a three quarter inch crank just the same crank as a matter of fact you would use on your stabilizer jacks you would pull this piece out put the crank strength down into it and you can crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble if you if you need to so um, uh, it can work manually. Um, also, there's a kill switch for your batteries. You have two batteries. They're wired to 12 volts, so you're still putting out 12 volts. It just doubled the storage capacity. So when you're inverting power with your inverter, you'll have plenty of 12 volt to invert. Um, as you, I'm sure you know, inverting is, is, is converting 12 volts DC to 110 AC and converting, which this trailer also has a converter, is just the opposite. It's converting 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So this trailer does both. Okay. Now, this right there is your kill switch. So you can see it right here. That's how you can shut your battery off. So when you put it into storage, you can shut the batteries off so they don't, they don't drain down as quickly. Um, all other times you want it on because your tow vehicle charges the battery, your power converter charges the battery when you're plugged in so you always want to hook up unless you're in storage okay so this is your crank that I told you about right here Let's see if I can get a picture of it I'm having a hard time seeing the monitor as usual um, this is the hose I told you about for your grill you see you got a male end here which goes into the quick connect under the trailer and then you have a female here that uh, goes into the bottom of the grill 
Okay, and those are your box has your grill and your grill rack in it. Okay. Also, you get a wheel with it. You, right now, it's got a, a foot, but you can put the wheel on it so you can move it around also. Okay, this is your water heater. Your water heater works on either gas or electric. Okay, the thing to know is that, hold on one second, I got to scratch. My thumb is itching like, wow. Okay, um, you, you, there's a switch down here in the lower left-hand corner. Let me get down here so I can show you. It's right here, right? Let's see if I can see it on the monitor. All right, right there. So it's just an on and off rocker switch. That controls an electric heating element that's behind this panel here, this cover. So keep in mind to turn the electric heating element on. All the switches are inside the trailer, mind you, but this is all kind of switch is kind of a holdover to when it was all, all, was all outside. So you have to put this to the on position. But one thing you always want to remember is never run the water heater without water in the in the water heater tank. The water heater tank is right behind this right here. This is the front end of it. And then there's a six gallon tank on the other side. There are also bypass valves on the water heater. So when you winterize, you have to educate yourself a bit on it if you don't know, but when you winterize, you have to bypass the water heater before you pump any antifreeze into it or else you'll get water, you'll get antifreeze into the water heater tank. It leaves a really foul smell and a bad taste and it just doesn't go away. So you bypass it before you do that when you're winterizing, okay? But like I stated, you always want to make sure that there is, there is water in the water heater tank before you turn on any energy source, whether it's gas or electric. You always have to have water in there. To, to, to show yourself if you have water, you'll hook up the city water connection, you'll turn it on, uh, you'll turn on, let's say, the hot, the hot water valve over the sink. If this tank is empty, it'll just be blowing air out. Um, and then as it fills, it'll be air and water mixture, and eventually you'll get solid water coming out. That's how you know it's full when solid water comes out, okay? This is your drain plug here. It's got an anode rat attached to it, so it's about 10 inches long. Um, now, this takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket to take it out, and this is a pressure release valve here. So you can see right there. Um, never release the pressure or pull the the plug while the water's hot. Obviously, you don't want to scald yourself or worse. So you always wait till it cools down. Um, and always vent it before you take the plug out, otherwise it'll shoot either like a cannonball and uh, followed by a gallon or so of water, so, okay? Now the other switches for this are on the inside. I just wanted to show you that this, this switch in the lower left corner is for the electric heating element. All right, so uh, here's your water hookups here. So city water is the most common way to get water to this trailer. So you're basically just gonna put your hose on here turn it on and it's ready to go. Now if you happen to go to a, a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsites, like some of the older state parks or maybe some more rustic federal land or whatever, you can pre-fill your, your onboard water tank right here. So you would, you would fill this tank before you get to, to the campground obviously, and then you use the onboard pump to pump the water. So they're independent of each, each other in the sense that if you have city water you don't have to worry about that tank or the water pump. Everything is handled with the, with the city water pressure here. And vice versa, you don't have to, if you're using this, you don't have to worry about city water pressure, okay? Also, um, this is, I, you have to educate yourself about this, like I was saying more, but this has to do with winterizing right here. This is a port that you would draw antifreeze in. You make up a hose, you just go to the, a hardware store and get the, all the fittings, and you make a hose that's long enough to reach the ground, and then basically you put that end into a gallon of antifreeze and use the water pump to to pump the antifreeze throughout the system. There's a valve on, just inside the trailer on the opposite, opposite from this panel on the back of it, or the back area of it. There's a, um, a valve that you'll have to switch because normally the water pump will draw water from the fresh water tank, right? So if you want to draw antifreeze in, you have to switch the valve so it draws from this port here, okay? And this here is um, your your uh, black tank flush, right? So what the black tank flush is, here, let me show you. These are, these, are, these are your dump valves here. This is the black tank valve here, right? This is the gray tank valve here. So basically, I don't know what he's got in here, if he's, if he's water testing it, but basically, you'll pull the black first, right? You got, your hose is on here, obviously, and it's going to the dump station. You pull a black first. Black is toilet water and waste. So it's the dirtiest of the water. Second, you'll pull the gray valve, 
which is sink and shower water. So it's a little bit cleaner than the black water, so it'll just help to wash out the hose, right? Then if you leave the black valve open, you can hook your hose right up to here. And that will actually, uh, it flush the black tank out. So it'll spray the inside of the black tank and it'll clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. Uh, so just it just does a better job with your black tank. So it's a, it's a good thing to do. All right, this is just an outside shower, hot and cold water. These are service panels for your refrigerator. I showed you your, um, your fresh water fill. That white valve down there is, is the dump valve for your fresh water tank. So if you don't use all the water in your fresh tank, you can dump it before you leave. Okay, this is your cord, your shore cord, power cord. You hear both terms used. It's 30 feet long and it's 30 amps. Okay, it has to be 30 amp system because you have an air conditioner. All right, so moving towards the back. First of all, this housing up here tells us that this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So you can get a backup camera for this one. If you choose to, it's a Furion camera you have to get. So you can buy them here, you can get them at different places, but the, the main thing is get the, get the one that fits in that housing, okay? Also, it's great because you already have a ladder on here, so you have to, all trailers, if you own a trailer, you have to inspect the roof every 60 or every 90 days, I should say. Figure three times a season. Once in the spring, once in the middle of the summer, once in the fall. You go up there or have somebody else go up on the roof and you uh, walk around. You can walk no problem. Just be careful. Check all the sealant on the roof. So any place you see sealant from the factory, you check it. Make sure there's no cracking or separation anywhere. Some year, sometime when you're inspecting, you're going to see some separation or cracking starting. And when you see that, you have it taken care of immediately. You don't have to redo the entire roof. You just have to uh, do that area. Never get caught from a hardware store, always get the correct stuff from an RV place. Okay? All right. And of course your power awning, which we talked about briefly. So let's go inside. We're still cleaning it up for you, but we'll, we'll, I'll talk you through it here. This is your control panel here. So you check your levels right here. This is your battery. You can see all the LEDs lit up so it's charged, although you always want to check it when you're not plugged in. Your fresh water has about a third in the tank right now. We're still working with it. Your black is empty. Your gray is empty. Now as it fills, it'll, it'll, the, the lights will light up in one-third increments till it's full. So keep in mind, once you get past two-thirds with the black and gray tank, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping. Okay, these are your light switches, of course. This is your, your power awning, extend and retract. I'll just move up it a little bit for you so you can see it. Okay, so it goes out eight feet. You'll see the awning tube when it gets all the way out. You'll know you're all the way out. Um, keep in mind that you never want to leave it out unattended so if you're not going to be at the campsite you always roll your awning in because the wind can t get a hold of it real quickly and damage it so you always want to roll it in when you're not there okay so the water pump I told you about the switch is right here the water heater on gas remember always make sure there's water in the tank you light gas there electric here now this is the second electric switch right yeah I already showed you one that's in the lower left hand corner so keep in mind there's two of them all right, so you gotta have the, in order for this to work, obviously you have to have the one that's in the lower left-hand corner of the tank on also, okay? All right, good. This is a GFCI plug. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through this, including the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot outside and it pops, you're still gonna reset it right here. All right, so this here, this is your power inverter switch. We've got a lot of light here. I don't think we can see it light up, but maybe if I use my shadow here, let me see if I got it. So. Right there, you can see it lit up green. Now we're inverting power. So we're taking the 12 volts from the battery and converting it to 110 AC. Uh, this plug is wired to the inverter, so that's where you're going to get your inverted power from that plug right there. Okay, and you shut it off, you got to hold it for a second, like that, and then off it goes. Now, while we're talking about power, you can come over here to, the, your, to your panel push now you don't there's not a and b battery although because there's oh there's two batteries they're wired together as one so you'll pay attention to b so you can see it's 100 percent charged um uh, 24 amp hours um 13.9 volts which is excellent um and you're gaining 4.0 amps from the sun you see the picture of the sun arrow going to the the uh, picture of a solar panel um so right now, from the sun, we're, we're gaining 4.0 and it's switching between 3.9 and 4.0, okay? Um, so you just do that on the, this 
button right here. Uh, also, there's a charger there. You can see that, but um, that basically covers it. So it's don't consider battery A and B. Just consider battery B because uh, they're wired together. That's the important thing to remember. Okay. Um, now, of course, if you change positions of the trailer, depending on where the sun's in the sky is, you can you can get more amps. You know, you can you can get it to. Uh, to send nine or whatever, or capture nine or whatever, but you have to move it, move it around. So keep keep that in mind. Also, okay. And this is Bluetooth enabled, so you'll, there's an app you can uh, download from GoPower, uh, and you can you can uh, do it that way. Also, while we're standing here, this is just the, the furnace thermostat. It's a simple analog thermostat. When it's all the way to the left, this it's off. But if you turn it on, you'll hear it come on right there. When you shut it off, you bring it all the way over and click it. So as soon as we did that, the flame went out, right? Um, it'll, you'll still hear it running because it'll purge itself, so it'll run for another minute or two before it shuts off. All right, microwave works like any other microwave. Your air conditioner has the controls on the air conditioner, okay? Now this refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator, so it'll run on 110 AC or it'll run on LP gas. Auto means electric. So first of all, you, it's off. You turn it on like that. Uh, you switch this by the mode button to auto. Auto means electric. Electricity takes parameters, so it will always seek out 110 AC and use it if it's available. If not, it'll automatically switch over to gas and use that if it's available, right? Uh, so let's say uh, you're you you're uh, get up early in the morning and everybody's going in on an adventure for the day. It's a hot day. A couple hours after you leave, there's, the campground has a power failure, right? So it, this refrigerator will sense that, because it's on auto, it'll sense that, and it'll automatically light it on gas so you don't spoil your food. So that's why they call it auto. Um, you can run a dedicated to gas like that, pulling it down the road, but keep in mind, if, it, if there's no power, uh, it'll automatically switch to gas anyway. All right, so one other thing. This device here is a is a thermistor it's actually on the end of that you can see that wire there that goes up into this this beige just white clip um, the, the thermistor is actually a cylinder that's on the end of that wire the higher you go with it the cooler the refrigerator gets so you want that wire to be taut like it is now and the refrigerator is going full cool you're almost always going to leave it like that I mean sometimes if it's cold outside and you start to frost up, you can back it off, back it down a bit. But generally speaking, you're going to be up all the way with it. Okay. This device down here, I showed you the inverter. This device down here is, the, is a power converter. Right? So this is it right here. So what this does is converts 110 AC over to 12 volt DC. Everything that can run on 12 volts DC in a trailer does. Uh, some things have to be AC power, like the air conditioner or the microwave, for example. But anything they can run on 12 volt DC, they do. So this converts AC to DC. So on this side, you have a regular household circuit breakers. It's 110 AC, and they're all labeled. Okay. Then the power is converted over here to 12 volt DC on this side. You see, you got 12 volt fuses there, and they're all labeled right down there. Uh, so that's where the 12 volt power comes. So comes from. So you can convert AC to DC power when you're plugged in. Otherwise, you're, you will be drawing 12 volt from the batteries, right? You see what I'm saying? So as long as you plug in, this, this creates all the 12 volt DC that you need. You'll only, have to, you'll only have to draw it from the batteries when you're not plugged into AC power. Okay. Um, if any of these fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up, and you can see them through this perforation here, so you would know that. Also, this is a battery tender. So again, as long as you're plugged into shore power, um, regular regular 110 AC uh, it'll it'll sense how much energy your battery has and how much it needs and it'll keep your batteries up front charged uh, if they're almost totally charged it'll just trickle a couple amps up there if it's low it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to charge up your batteries okay so that's this is a battery is power converter converts AC to DC power um, and it keeps your battery charged this device next to it is your LP gas and carbon monoxide detector. You can see it's got a green pilot light. It should always be green like that. I'll, I'll set it off for you. It'll go through the self tests here. There we go. One for carbon monoxide, another one for LP gas right there. And it's beeping very slowly. Okay. 
So when it beeps real slowly like that, it's telling you your battery is low, right? Your battery's up front. Um, but the regular alarm, which is that same beep but, but rapid, uh, that's telling you you got a carbon dioxide buildup or LP gas leak built slash buildup. So if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, of course, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. It's a very important thing. It's hardwired to the battery, so you can't shut it off. Um, but that's what that is, okay? All right, so let's see what else we've got in this trailer. Storage underneath your your um, little couch, couch is there. You can also drop the table down and set it on these cleats here. There's two on each side. Use the back curtain to fill in the space, and you have a uh, another bed here. All right, it's kind of neat. This is your fan that I told you about in, in light, the light there, the fan. Remember I told you there's a baffle on the, on the vent on the outside, so you always got to free it up by pushing those little latches so it can flap freely. All right. All right, so your range, I'm not sure if he's got the gas on or not right now. Let me find out here. Basically, you're, you're going to turn it to, to light, which is right there, and then you're going to spark it. So it looks like he doesn't have the gas turned on, but if it was, when I'm sparking it, this um, will, this one would light right here. There's a, a knob for each burner, okay? Now this, to light the oven, it's a little bit different. Um, you, if you see way down here, there's a pilot light all the way to the back. So you uh, obviously have to light the pilot light. You would, uh, you, you would go take the oven knob and go to pilot and depress it and hold it in. Then you light the pilot light. After it lights, you still hold it in for another 10 seconds or so to heat it up. You go to operating temperature and it cycles on and off as an oven does. But when you shut it off, you're obviously your, your power goes out or your, your flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Went a long way to say very little there, sorry. Um, you have a really nice fan with a, with a vent cover over it. You can leave it open during the rain. Um, you have four speeds, um, so you always want to run this when you're using the shower. Um, just run it on low so it pulls the humidity out because these trailers are built super tight these days. You don't want to create any conditions that mildew would, or mold could grow, so always vent it when you're using the shower. Also, when a bunch of people are in here and it's, the temperature is such, it's usually in the evening, you're getting condensation from your breath, you can turn this on like this and it'll pull it all out. You won't have any issues with it. So. So, and like I said, it's four speed, so it's a nice one. Um, the thing to know about the, the sink and shower work, like any other sink and shower, except for this has a, a water um, recirculating system called a uh, water miser. You can see it's right there, the blue thing with the handle right here. Okay, so basically, what this does is it re instead of just dumping um, water into your gray into your gray tank, waiting for it to heat up it'll keep recycling it around in a circle so you don't waste it. So if you're in drought conditions, you, you don't use up as much wa water, and no matter where you're at, you don't waste space in your gray tank just, just dumping clean water in it that just hasn't been heated up. So you put it in this position and you turn on your hot water, and this will actually, this blue will actually change color. You'll see it very, very as plain as day, you'll see the difference. Once it changes that color, you know that it's, it's heat it up and then you would change the position of the valve so it runs normally and it'll work just like a regular shower but before I changed the valve obviously it was recirculating it was just taking it around in a circle so you're not filling, I'll repeat again, so you're not filling your gray tank with water when you don't need to taking up your storage space or if you're in a, in a drought area like parts of California or whatever uh, you're not wasting water so that's what that is. I want to say to you that you know, in, you have a packet in here when there's 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 uh, pamphlets and, and and manuals on every attachment, every appliance in here. But you can also just search them on go either go to the company website or the YouTube whatever and, and search water miser for example, and it'll have a whole manufacturer's video on it. Manufacturer's videos are the instruction videos anyway are are really really big help. Um, if you're on the road and you have, you're not used to using this because you just got it, you can always refer back to your paperwork, plus you can, you can do a, um, manufacturer's videos, okay? Alright. The toilet, the thing to know about the toilet, first of all it's ceramic so it's, a, it's nice, it's not just 
creaky plastic thing. The flusher right here. Okay. I can turn on the water pump because we have a little water in the tank, as I recall. So I'll just let's turn this on. Okay. So you can't. The black tank is directly below here. So on the other side of that trap is the black tank. So when you first get to the campground, you're hooking up your um, water. You're pu plugging the trailer in. Then you come inside here, and, and you'll take your chemical, whichever chemical you're using, uh, whichever brand you use. You'll, you'll basically put one dose right in the toilet bowl. Then you'll stand on the pedal and water will come pumping out like that. And you're, what you're going to do is you're going to stand on the pedal until you put around a gallon of water in there. Something like that. It doesn't have to be exact by any means. The bottom line is you have to have chemical or in some water in the tank before you start using it. If you don't, it'll smell bad and it'll just be a big mess. So you'll, if you, if you don't put the water and the chemical in it, you'll just definitely only do it one time. So um, make sure you always, when you're starting off with a dry black tank, you put chemical and water in there to start off. Okay. I think we're just about there now. Let me look around. Okay. Your TV, obviously, this is um, a 12 volt TV, but there's a this this device here you can barely see it but that is the signal booster for the digital antenna it's always the pilot light should always be lit on it or you won't get a good picture this is your antenna here it just rotates it does not go up and down okay your sound here you can stream off a USB stick so you can put all your favorite albums on one stick and take it with you or you can um, uh, hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth and stream from your phone or your tablet and you can go into the system here with this HDMI if you need to with a game machine to keep kids busy on a rainy day or something like that anyway. Um, you have two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside, two is outside. So there's a lot you can do with it. Um, the TV itself has a disc player and it's got a, a SD card plus USB. So you can stream that away. Okay. And last but not least, this is the Wi-Fi Ranger. So the Wi-Fi Ranger is a signal booster. Um, you can see there's a, you won't be able to read it, I don't think, but there's a sticker right here. The top um, Ranger Sky L, Sky 4 LTE, looks like 8571. That is you. That is your Wi-Fi Ranger. So you'll, you'll hook, you'll put the password and everything into all your phones or tablets. So you, they'll hook up automatically to your Wi-Fi Ranger. Then when you get to the campground or any place you can get free public Wi-Fi from, this is a great signal booster. That's its main function. Um, you, you go to control panel, you see there's an IP address there on the bottom line. So you would type in that IP address into a browser and you'll see everything that the Wi-Fi Ranger sees, right? So then you would pick out the campground Wi-Fi. If they give you a password, you type that in um, and you just get a really good boosted signal, much better bandwidth, cleaner all the way around. So that's what this does. The, the middle line is, is the temporary password, change me now. Uh, you can read that. Um, so that's what, when you look at the, there's a little device with two small rubber antennas sticking up, that's your Wi-Fi Ranger. Keep in mind that that's the free version of it, and that's what most people use. But if you need cellular service, you can actually uh, get, uh, you'd have to go through your, uh, your um, whoever you get your cellular service from, you, and it would be like getting another device. You'd have to pay a monthly fee, but you can do that too with it, is what I'm saying. Most people just use the free Wi-Fi with the Wi-Fi booster, but if you work from it or you have a need to have that kind of connection, you can always do that too, okay? All right, hopefully that made sense. This is just a plug for your uh, mattress. Uh, there'll be a, a, a plastic port that this plugs into here, and then the other end goes into the nearest 110 uh, right there, 110 AC, and you, it'll warm up your mattress. It doesn't heat it, it warms it. This device here will display your um, tire pressure and the temperature of the of the hub. Basically, um, it's it's set up. You can see all these 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 yellow tires here. This is like a tractor trailer. That's how far this can be expanded to. Of course, you don't have anything like that. Um, so you're just going to you've got one axle. So. I didn't program this one, but probably this one right here on each side will be will light up. So it just tells you what each the pressure on each wheel or in each tire and the temperature of each wheel around the hub area. Um, if you want, you know, with this the the sensors are internal. 
uh, to your wheel here. So the sensors would be on inside the tire and they're exactly opposite from the valve stem. So they'd be on the other side attached to the wheel inside the tire. You can also buy outside sensors that screw right onto the valve core. So if you wanted to add your tow vehicle tires onto it also, you can get those and you could you, you could program it so it'll it'll read your your tow vehicle too. Or if you just rather do it the old-fashioned way, you just take your tire gauge with you and check it periodically. Which you can't you can't go wrong doing that. So but that's what this is right here, okay? Alright, so let me look through here, make sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, that's your emergency window. Obviously you just push it through and then grab hold of the red tab there and pull the screen out and you can exit in an emergency. You got all kinds of USB uh, plugs here to charge things. Always travel with your um, with your glass top on the range down because they tend to want to break. This also has a um, um, a water filter canister in it, and this comes with a water filter. So you'll have to learn how to access that. It's um, we talked a little bit about it where the, where you can draw the antifreeze into the port, that sort of thing. That valve will be right by the water pump. So will the uh, water filter canister. So um, keep in mind that you uh, you have a, a canister for this water filter right here. If you choose to use it, it's a carbon block filter. It doesn't do reverse osmosis or anything like that, but it'll still take out you know chlorine and the chlorine taste and smell, sediment, things like that. So it's it's a, it's decent. Um, this is the wrench you would use to spin off the canister. If you use this, you got to replace it every season. So every spring you have a new one put in or do it yourself. This key is for your rack system on the top. You got bike slat or not bike actually it's usually kayak or canoe rack, whatever you whatever you're gonna put on the roof, this is how you adjust the uh, the crossbars with that. Um, these are your remotes obviously for the TV and that one is for your, your radio. Alright, so you have that stuff too. Alright, I think I've got it now. Let me look around. These are very well-built trailers. I'm a big fan of Flagstaff trailers. They are among the best that I deal with and for the price and and the overall package they can't be beat as far as I'm concerned. So you made a good decision from my standpoint. I'm not, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a mechanic. So um, remember to inspect your roof regularly. You have to do that with all trailers. Any place you see caulk on the side, you know, like the corner, the corner moldings, things like that, any place you see caulk from the factory, you're going to look it over also. And when you see separation starting or cracking, you take care of it immediately. That's very important, okay? So thank you very much for purchasing your, tra purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And um, have a lot of fun with it. Thank you.